The United States is the second largest tomato grower in the world. It produces around 32 billion pounds a year. But growing the fruit in such large quantities comes at a cost. The sweet taste you may remember from your grandmother's garden has been lost. Now researchers have found a way to put the flavor back into the tomatoes. David Begno is at a Dallas grocery store to show us how that happened. David, good morning. Charlie, good morning. You like tomatoes? Yes, indeed. I love tomatoes. Well, there you go. More than two billion, Charlie, <laughs> are sold every year. But like you said, a lot of people have been telling us since we started researching this story, they just don't taste like what they used to. But now you've got a team of researchers in Florida who say they think they can change that. So we went to Gainesville, Florida, to meet them and see exactly what they're up to. So this one here actually is a great example. This is an old variety of tomato that was commercial 100 years ago. Biologist Harry Klee has been researching tomatoes and their disappearing flavor for more than two decades. All we've done between now and then was to add water to this fruit and make it bigger and bigger. Over the years, tomato plants have been bred to be commercially viable, producing lots of disease-resistant, long-lasting fruit, big and hearty, but not necessarily tasty. There are 30 or more compounds that give us flavor in tomato. Think of it as a symphony and think of what would happen if I start removing instruments one by one. You wouldn't notice. Then all of a sudden you get to a point where you've removed six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and all of a sudden, whoa, that doesn't sound the same. To identify exactly what determines flavor, Klee and his team of scientists sequenced genomes of nearly 400 varieties of tomatoes. We gave many of those to consumers and said, how much do you like this and what's in it? They matched up what flavors consumers like most with specific genes. Now, Klee says they can breed tomatoes to please farmers and eaters. Yeah. So how do you make it better? Genetics. <laughs> we go back and we say, this one has great flavor, this one has high yield. Let's cross the two together and let's pick out the babies that have the really high yield and the great flavor. We constantly tell everybody, eat more fruits and vegetables. But if we have bred the flavor out of the food that we should be eating, it's really not a surprise that people don't want to eat them. Mark Schatzker wrote about food and flavor in the Dorito Effect. The consumer plays a big role here. One of the things we need to do is tell supermarkets that we care about flavor and that we'll pay a little bit more for it. And if Klee has his way, we'll all be enjoying a sweeter, more flavorful fruit very soon. I think we will be able to create a tomato that tastes markedly better in the next two years, and hopefully we can have it in the supermarket in three. So there you go, tomato lovers. Now, Klee says they're not exactly engineering a new tomato. So those of you who have GMO concerns, this is just about taking two better tasting tomatoes and breeding them for a new baby tomato that tastes even better. And Gail, the good news is they're also doing work on two of my favorite fruits, strawberries and blueberries. Oh, uh, you yeah, must be in heaven today, David. We like tomatoes too. I like the kind <laughs> that you could bite like an apple, like your grandma used to David, do. David, I don't want to put you on the and spot. And it just like dribbles all over your yes. face, right? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Charlie. I don't want to put you on the spot. What's the largest producer of tomatoes? Yep. What country? Uh, that's a good question that I didn't ask, Charlie. If you were there, you would ask the question, and the story would be even better. I failed to ask that. <laughs> no, no, I said I didn't want to mean that. I didn't mean that. I'm, I'm wondering if it's Mexico. That's why I'm asking. I'm wondering if it's Mexico. Uh, Mexico, Mexico is one of the largest producers, the scientists said. Yep, one okay. of the largest. All right, thank you, David. David, thank you very much.